Barbies, New Amsterdam, and of course right here on the Quarantine Coast. And of course to all my friends and followers on Facebook. Uh, welcome once again to another program of Issues in the News where we discuss the important events that would have taken place in our country over the last week or so. And as I would normally say, we live in a very dynamic society and in any given one week period there are so many important issues of national importance worthy of our discussion. This week is no different. But before we get into the program, I want to take this opportunity to remind our all supporters of the People's Progressive Party that we have one last week or rather a few days more before this cycle of the registration exercise comes to an end. It comes to an end, I believe, on March the 4th. We have activists on the ground and we have persons in every community encouraging you to go to the GCOM centers located in your locality and to make the necessary transactions. Some of you, as I said, this is the period by which you can change your name, correct any mistakes in your name on the list. You can do transfers if you would have moved. You, and of course, significantly, persons who would have attained 14 years since the last registration process, you can now have your names be placed on the list. This is a very important national and civic exercise and you are expected to cooperate. Remember, this is the only way by which you can get your ID card or get information on your ID card corrected and get your right address placed on the national records of this country. And it is also important in terms of preparing for the next general elections. So the date is March the 4th. You have just a few days more. Please go down to the centers and complete this important business which is outstanding. Now, the other important announcement that I want to make is that this year we are celebrating 100 years of the life of Chedi Jagan. Chedi Jagan, the founder of our party and the father of this nation, was born in March 1918. March 2018 we will be celebrating his 100th birthday. Of course, the entire year of 2018 is dedicated to celebrating the life, the work, and the legacy of one of the greatest Guyanese to have ever lived. His contributions, as you know, are monumental. And the least we can do is to pay homage, to pay respect, to what he lived for, what he sacrificed, and what he achieved, and to salute those achievements while we continue to pledge to do his good work. So this entire year is Chedi Jagan year of celebrations. The party, as well as the Chedi Jagan Resort Institute, has a number of events that would be celebrated during the year. You will hear about them uh, in due course. But currently, the big event that the party is planning and is organizing is the Babu Jan event, which will take place on the 11th of March. Of course, the party structure will be informing you and you will be seeing advertisements, etc. But I just wish to use this platform to inform you that we want a massive turnout. We want a massive turnout at Babu Jan on the 11th of March. Sunday the 11th of March we will have the usual Babu Jan activities but this time we want 
the, a massive start out because here we are celebrating the birth anniversary of Dr. Jagan. And with all the problems happening in Barbies, with all the problems happening in the sugar industry, and you know he dedicated most of his political life to struggle and sacrifice for the sugar workers. They're, they're, he founded their union, he agitated at every, every step of the way. He agitated for better conditions. His political career, in fact, began at the graveside of the Enmore Martyrs, where those sugar workers were gone down in Enmore, who were agitating for better working conditions, better living conditions, and better wages and salaries. And that is, out of that, Jagan's political consciousness and struggle was born. And out of that came the PPP, and everything else is history. So the least we can do is to turn up there on the 11th to show our love, to show our support, to show our respect, and to pay homage to one of the greatest sons of Guyana. This week also, Friday, we will be celebrating Padua. I want to take this opportunity to extend holy greetings to all my Hindu brothers and sisters, and indeed all Guyana, but specifically my Hindu brothers and sisters. Padua, as you know, signifies the triumph of good over evil. It signifies the celebration of great sacrifices and the ensuing rewards which come from great sacrifices. It's one of the most auspicious occasions on the Hindu calendar and I encourage you to come out and celebrate. I know, as I said before, we are living in very dark times. Times are not as good as they used to be, but we must use the occasions of Pagwa and the significance of Pagwa to resolve our determination and resolve our strength and be prepared for the struggles that are ahead. Uh, that are ahead. The significance of Pagwa can be used for us to garner and gather that grit and determination which is necessary for us to endure the difficulties that are put before us as a people, especially you in Barbies. Well, you know, last week on the 23rd of February, we celebrated the Republican anniversary of our country. And as you know, it is customary for there to be flag raising uh, ceremonies in celebration and in recogni recognition of Guyana attaining Republican status. This is a tradition that commenced since 1970 and it has continued, where at different parts of the country, in particular in the different cities or in the different towns, uh, events are organized by the town council, as the case may be, or at the level of the government, or at different level of the state, for there to be activities organized where people living in different geographic areas can celebrate a national event. Let me make the point that Republic anniversary is a national event. It's not a government event. While government is part of the nation, the government is not the nation. And therefore, every organization of, of state and every single Guyanese is entitled as of right and as a matter of constitutional freedom to celebrate national events. Padua is a religious Hindu festival, but it is a national event. And therefore, every Guyanese is entitled to celebrate Padua. Every Guyanese is entitled to celebrate Republic. Every organization in this country is entitled to celebrate. In our democracy, we have organizations 
that are independent of government. These organizations consist of elected bodies. They consist of various different state institutions. But among them are town councils of our country. In Barbies alone, we have three town councils. We have one that govern and administer the business of the town of New Amsterdam. We have one that govern and administer the affairs and business of the town of Rose Hall. And we have one that administers and govern the business of Corriverton. Each of these entities are independent. They are made up of councillors who are elected officials elected by the people at an election. And when they are elected, depending upon how which political party they may have come from, they are entitled to function independent of government as an elected body. And that allows them to exercise independence and autonomy in the management of the affairs of the locality to which they have been elected and to discharge their functions in a manner independent of and apart from the government of the day. And as you are aware, the town council of Corriverton planned its own flag raising ceremony and a host of activities by which they intended to celebrate our Republic anniversary. And the government broke it up. The government broke it up. I have with me here two members of the council, Ganesh Gangadin, a former mayor who is still a councillor, and Winston Roberts, a councillor and a person who is responsible for the chairman of national events at the town council. These two gentlemen will shortly join me and we will have a discussion for your benefit so that you can understand what transpired. The significance of me doing all of this is because this these things used to happen before when the PNC was in government and we had a dictatorship installed and foisted upon the Guyanese people. They controlled the state as if they owned everything in this country and everything in this country had to have been done in accordance with their diktat and with, in accordance with their wishes. And so that, and they're coming again with the same type of mentality. People died in a struggle to remove them. People were jailed. People lost their homes. People lost their lives. Thousands of people migrated from this land for fear of the dictatorship. And we, now this generation, we owe it to those people to ensure that a dictatorship never ever esconce itself in this country. Unfortunately, we are seeing evidence of the emergence of this dictatorship. I write about it almost weekly on the Facebook and in the newspapers and you are seeing evidence of it and what transpired last week at Corivata is an alarming exhibition of that dictatorship, that monstrosity emerging once again to engulf this country. And we, this generation of Guyanese, this generation of political leaders cannot afford to stay silent and not to get involved. And as a result, I want to make it my responsibility to bring these two persons who have first-hand knowledge of what transpired so that you, the people out there, 
and on the Facebook, in the diaspora, and elsewhere in the world can see and hear for yourself what transpired on that fateful night. So, Mr. Ganesh Gangadin and Winston Roberts, please come into the studio. They are walking in now, so we may have a little disruption. Please have a seat here. Stay close to me as possible. So on my right, on this side of me, is Ganesh Gangadin, and on this side of me is Mr. Winston Robert. Roberts. Both of them, as you know, this gentleman was former a former mayor, and he's still on the council, and this gentleman is on the council and is the chairman of the National Events Committee. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. And as you would have heard, I invited you here so that you can speak to the people, both in the diaspora, on, on, on the internet, on the Facebook, and of course, those who are in their homes looking at us, so that they can have a first-hand opportunity of what, tra what transpired that day. So welcome to the program, and let's start with you, Mr. Winston Roberts. Let me have a few remarks and explain briefly what um, what unfolded that day? Thank you, Stanley. <clears throat> At our planning of this ceremony, the foundation ceremony, we had uh, invited Mr. Bolton on the 13th of February, and um, we, we invited him for to be our guest speaker. And um, we didn't get no reply from him. And on the 19th day of February, around 2:15. I got a call from Mrs. Anna at the office, that is the county telephone, that um, Mr. Vulcan would not be coming, that um, Mr. Kemmer Robertson would be coming. So, viewers, I pause here to make the fundamental point that the town council, though they did not have to, they invited Minister Vulcan to be the guest speaker. On the 13th of February. On, since the 13th of February. Originally, he was supposed to be the guest speaker, and Amna on Ali office called to say that on the, 19th. on the 19th of February, this event is on the 20th. 22nd. On the 22nd, sorry. <coughs> Amna Ali office called just a couple days before to say Bulkan can come, but that, that Mr. Kemrat Ramjatan will be there. Well, tell us what happened after that. Subsequently, after about 10 minutes or so, I got another phone call from Mr. Kemraj's office stating that um, he will be coming to be our guest speaker. I told the people um, who said I was talking to that we already set aside our program. However, I will still put his name to be a speaker on the night of the event. So who you told that to? I told both offices. Both Ramjitan's office and, and, and Amna Ali office that by that time you had already planned your I program. I planned my program. And who planned this program? The council program. The council? Yeah. And on that program, who you named as the guest speaker? No, we didn't have no guest speaker on our program. What we oh, have okay. speakers, Mr. Kevin Ramjitan as one. Uh -huh. And Mr. Adrian and Maya, which is two. Okay. And what was the objection? The objection is that uh, up to the up to the twenty first of February, I went to the police station to ask them if everything is okay with them for the parade. And Inspector Grizani told me that Which police station? Springer's police station. Yes. You uh, spoke with an inspector, Brin Zandi. Yeah. At the time, he had his men in parade preparing for the next day event. Subsequently, after, he called me and told me that, listen, we are making preparation, but I don't know whether if it's even going to that he's waiting for a word from our office. All right. Le you want to come in now? Good, sir. Le Firstly, I must say good evening to all our viewers and uh, I hope that we reach you in very good health and strength. Um, 
and I'm very happy to be on this forum so that we can also explain to you uh, what took place and, and what led to this whole scenario fiasco. And I want to point out that our mayor said that it is indeed a dark day in the history of Karimita. It's a dark day for democracy and um, generally for the free will of the local democratic organs. And I want to point out here, I, I, don't, I hope not doing prematurely, but all town councils and local government authorities should take note of what has transpired. And I'm hoping that you will join with us in denouncing this, this tiny event, which is a non-democratic one. Firstly, the decision to have the speakers and even the program was one that was discussed at the statutory meeting where all councillors, inclusive of councillors that were elected by their party, um, when in this case the NDIA, the, the, um, the independent group that was there, and every member had decided that, listen, we will choose Mr. Bulkan to be our guest speaker. And in the event that he's not available, as was done in the past, we will force, seek to see if Mr. Uh, David Armagon, who's our regional chairman, if he is available to speak. And if he's not available, we will give local people. And Mr. Anamayo is a resident of our town and he's a member of parliament. And every man and woman elected representative of the council had no objection to this decision. Come the date, as a matter of fact, I want to say, Mr. Bulka never responded to us. We wrote, he never responded. And as well, the rest is history, Mr. Wars explained to you what transpired. And um, on the day of the parade of the poem itself, the police were there in large numbers. People, persons who were in, if not ranks of the skeleton police station. They came from all parts of, um, of the B Division, from West Barbies, Wim, Albion, New Amsterdam. But how many police officers came on the night? We, there were at least three inspectors or key thing, and about another 20 other officers in numbers. We had three um, police vehicles that we, of course, saw that day. And there were more standing by. We were told. So you had about 30 police there. Yeah. Now, but before we reach there, yeah. what led to that? I mean, so far we've heard that you wanted to invite Volcan as a guest speaker, but you got no response from him. Right. Then mm -hmm. Amna Ali intervened and imposed Ram Jatan on you. Right. you um, by that time, however, you had already, you had a line of speakers set up. Right. Because you had, if you didn't get Volcan, then you would have asked mm -hmm. Armogan, the chairman. And if you didn't get Armogan, then you will ask Anamaya, the right. MP, Adrian Anamaya. Which we did. And Anamaya was chosen to be, um, as agreed by statutory, of course, to be our guest speaker. And that was a unanimous decision of your council. Inclusive of members of their side of the house as well. Right. So, good. Mm -hmm. So, the entire council agreed. So the important thing I want to put mm -hmm. out there is that you first extended a hand to Minister Volcan. Yes. And so, they, 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 you got no response. Right. right. And then you chose your second speaker, which was Armagan, apparently you didn't get him, and then you chose Adrian right. Anamaya, yes. your local MP. MP. Now, what happened now after you chose Adrian Anamaya? This led to them uh, apparently their disapproval and they then impose on us at the council that Mr. Kemrad, Honorable Kemrad Ramchan, will speak. Who did? This is Amos Ali office. They call you back? They call to inform us that he will speak. Of course, all who is in local government will know that we cannot override a statutory decision just like that. It has to go back to statutory and the councils have to, of course, come to a consensus. The mayor did intervene and we decided that Mr. Ramchitan would be allowed to speak as well as the National Event Chair will agree that he will speak. But as the program is here to say that we will no longer have a guest speaker but rather we will have both representatives mm -hmm. of the coalition government as well as Ms. Anamaya from the Member Parliament to give greetings 
Republic greetings. This, of course, angered um, the government because, and it angered them mainly because Mr. Ramchatan was stated to speak second to last. And Mr. Anamai would have been the last speaker, then with a white flag. And this, of course, what we believe angered them. I don't know what Amnali himself spoke to me and said. And if he cannot be the last speaker, we would not have a program. Oh, Amnali spoke to you? And she spoke to the mayor. Oh. But this was related to us, um, and I believe in press she did also say that. That, that what? What you said? Mr. Ramstan should have been the last speaker. And this, because they didn't find favor with them, she spoke to the police, instructing them to cancel the flag raising ceremony. And this happened the day on the flag raising ceremony, the day before flag raising ceremony. Sorry. And um, by then, stage was already set, music was hired, um, PA systems were, were was, um, you know, public advertisement went through advertising this, this event. And for the 48 years of her township, this event has always, has always been taking place, uh, or took place at the Republic Square. And sometimes when they were implemented, it, it took place in town council. But um, the police always participated, the fire service always participated, even on some occasions guys who go on there, their guards would come out and join in the parade. So on flag raising ceremonies, it's custom for us to take a march from around GBTI, who are familiar with Corbyton, um, and then we walk with March to Republic Square. We'll have a wonderful cultural presentation uh, where we showcase talents of not only people in Corbyton but uh, our extended uh, neighboring NDCs, and then we'll hoist the flag midnight, right? Um, and those are the program, and it's always been um, there, and we always done it like that. This year, their force is excused to us what that listen we didn't have uh, a, a, um, a written permission i am not sure when a written permission was required for this i mean it's been a history it's been there that's what we do all the time and the police were also informed as a matter of fact they were well prepared for this thing they were, they were part of the program and they were part of the march as well they were part of the march they were part of the <coughs> program you spoke to Brave Zandi before, so it was, they would have seen they would have seen um, the preparation being made, it's up, done very publicly. So the fact that, you know, but that was a conjured up excuse that right. came at the end when Amna Ali, who has no responsibility over police in this country, they, even the, the minister himself, Kemrat Ramjatan, has no legal authority to give that type of instruction to the police. Those are operational instructions. Go to break up an event. That, first of all, the police should not be used as a political instrument of force against the people. The police is there to serve the people. The commander is on record now as saying that he is unaware. So who did Amna Ali instruct? The, there was some body of policemen who were not acting under the superintendents and command of the commander. So they were acting on a frolic of their own and giving directions, um, gi giving effect to directions coming from a minister who did not even have responsibility over them. And even the minister who has responsibility over the police could not have given the type of directions that were given. So from top to bottom, it is unlawful. So the, you started the program, did you? Yes, we, the council at that point in time decided, listen, the people of Corbyton has always had this program and it must go on. And, and that was on the 22nd on itself. On the 22nd, the eve of the 22nd. So, force action to do, or the force um, attempt to solve that was the removal of the public announce system. Or what the time? You got to give people time free. So, this occurred around 2. Uh, PM of the day, of sat, uh, of the when the program was supposed seven, to start at seven. At seven. At seven PM. Seven PM. So uh, by two o'clock, you set up all the Everything started the began to set up the thing. And so then they, they took away the PA system at two o'clock in the afternoon. 
Town Council then brought another small PA system. Right? And who took it away? This is the police. The police. The police instructed the the what's the music? Uh huh. To back in from the place. Oh, and they remove the music. They remove the music. And then okay. I took it on the self and then go to the council and bring the council equipment. Yes. But they do in far conference and the mayor also was my intention. Yes. So we bring the music, the the the, the assistant did that. When we set it down now, Mr. Davidson came up and said, Can I use my system? Who is Davidson? Mr. Davidson probably came in afterwards. Who Mr. is Mr. Davidson? Mr. A policeman. Yeah, yes. He told you that you can't use. So I go up and I ask him, ask him what's going on. He said he expected to come and find this man the stage. I said, why? He said this event cannot go on tonight. So I continue asking him why he cannot go on. So he gave me a number, three 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 two and one to, to, to call um, operation in the Amsterdam. He said, why should I do that? He said to him, but he again, if I can't break the stage, he again meant to break it. So I tell him, yes, I will break the stage, but I'll break it tomorrow, not today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he was a bit upset, and then um, he started to say other, other things that you cannot carry on this event for tonight. And then um, you know, can't use the PA system, no mic, or whatsoever. So I, want, yeah, we, I just want to point out a one. one no, 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 I want us to go to the end. What happened after that? Okay, well, it's very important to also mention that the flag pole was already erected there and the flag was placed in the pole yeah. and the police removed the flag. This is yeah, a ring, a ring around 2 o'clock in the day. Mm -hmm. Took it to the station, that's the property of the town council, anyhow. Took it to the station, then informed the constabulary department that they can come and uplift the flag because no flag raising ceremony will be taking place today. Um, I think the, the constabulary subsequently complied and they went and collected the flag from the police station. So coming back to the program now, at 7 o'clock, we, at that point we still awaited Minister Ramstam, we gave him, um, because of the program, he didn't communicate back whether he did not come in or not. We waited until around, around half of an hour after and we attempted to start the program. We then were met with a lot of resistance from the police. What we said in the council said that we have to go on with this program because by then the Republic Square was filled with patrons coming in because this is, an, this is an annual event. School children by that time who were participating and other um, artists and so on were there, ready um, and eager to go. At 7.45 there about, when we eventually got on the stage and we were allowed to do the National Pledge, and as I was following the program, we want to go on with a poem now. And we called a child. Mr. Davidson then said to the, the, the thoughts that this cannot happen. He that ordered the same his, police, the police, the police inspector, yeah, policeman. Then we heard him say things to his ranks, ranks advanced. I, that's when they start coming on the stage. I asked and I then plead as a chairperson of the program that this is the town, and uh, uh, this is the municipality. The mayor is in charge and the people are here expecting to hear something from him. We need to know what's, what will be the plan of this town, how will we go in and, and, you know. So allow him to address the, um, the public and then we can hoist the flag if, if, that, if that's the case. He then refused as well. He so he refused the poem and the program. The program. And he refused the mayor from speaking. From speaking. He denied the mayor from speaking and denied you the right to raise the flag as well. I still insisted that this program have to go on. I called and introduced the, the mayor, asked him to come on stage. By then, I think this angered the, the police, Mrs. Davidson and, and his party of policemen, and they did advance to the stage at that point of time, and then forcefully removed me from the stage, um, taking me, at that point I said that we take him, the instructor was to take him, the Springlands Police Station. Um, on the way out, they were met with, uh, with resistance from the public and who demanded that the speed, mayor speak and that the flag raising um, go on. So they, were, they forced you out of the stage? Yeah. What, they you out of the stage? Yes, they, they held me and, and took me out of the stage forcefully. Even, uh, you know, all I asked was for the mayor to address 
and there was no peer system, there was no noise, nothing, but we still want, people still demanded that the mayor speak at the event. Um, and this was, this, this was not allowed. The, of course, the patrons by the same was very angry, agitated, and they also demanded that the mayor speak. And on my way out, as the police helped me, trying to take me to the police station, Springer's police station, um, they were met with a lot of resistance, and Mr. Davison eventually um, spoke, well, allowed us to go and hoist the flag. He said, raise the flag, and that's it. Well, when we got to the pole, horses surrounded us, and we did eventually allow Mr. Hampton Jaijin, who was a mayor, to speak briefly. And of course, Ms. Anamaya to also offer a few words. And um, councils by then decided that, you know what, this is an extremely dark day. Our rights were trampled on, our democratic right to host this event and everything were trampled on, and we shouldn't carry on further with the, the flag raising. And by then, patrons also got angry and, and removed the pole forcibly, <coughs> forced an abrupt end of the, the event. Well, viewers, you have heard for yourself from the participants at the event what transpired. So you don't have to listen to me and hear my second-hand version of it. You heard from the beginning that Amna Ali wanted to, the, the, the council decided that they would invite Mr. Bolkan and accord him all the privilege of a minister and made sure that he was the guest speaker. He never responded to the people. They had their own business. They made decisions at the town council. If they don't get Bolkan, well, then they will have their chairman. Or if they don't get the chairman, then they will have Mr. Anamaya, the MP. That was a decision of the council at a statutory meeting. Amna Ali now unilaterally want to upturn a decision of a democratically elected council by imposing Ramjatan on the council's agenda. And the council resisted that as they are entitled to do. And then they never heard back from Ramjatan either. So they went ahead and they pl planned the program, but they still included Ramjatan in the program. They removed guest speaker and they put him and Anamaya both to speak and both will give greetings. What is wrong with that? They did not even have to put Ramjatan as an elective council. They can decline to have a minister of the government address them if they don't wish that. That is their autonomy, that is their power, that is their entitlement, that is their democratic right as a, an elected body. They are not part of the government, they are part of the state. They do not have to take dictations from the government. But the authoritarians and the dictators, they don't understand these things. So Amna Ali believes that she's living in the 80s when they rigged elections and when we had no freedom and no, no rule of law in this country. So she sent the police, as she told you, she will do. She said if Ramjatan doesn't speak at the end of the program, then there will be no program. And she unleashed the police and Senior Superintendent Davidson and the commander, you cannot allow, this is not the time, the world will not tolerate police to be used as weapons against a people. The time for that has gone. And I am disappointed that a, super, a senior superintendent of police, Mr. Davidson, based upon the report we just heard, that you allowed yourself to be used in the manner in which you were used. You have a uniform, you have self-respect, you have a duty to protect and serve the people of this country. These people, there was no noise nuisance, there was no disorderly behavior, there was no riotous conduct. There was no breach of the peace. You, the police, caused everything. There was no basis for the police to intervene and instruct people to remove their public address system and to remove their, their stage. 
and I will encourage you. You have enough lawyers in Barbies. File a constitutional motion, a constitutional case, both against Davidson, Amna Ali, and you name them personally and in their capacity, in their official capacity. You sue them personally. The officers who took you off the stage assaulted you. They imprisoned you for a period of time. When you couldn't, you lost your freedom of movement. And you can sue them and recover damages. We need to take these kinds of decisions. Or else next, the next event that they have, which is May 26, 1966, you will normally have another fact yes, have exercise. So again, they will try, and at the end, if you succumb, then you will be degutted of your independence. You will be degutted of your constitutional freedoms. Because then they will, they will take over the whole place. So I just want, I just want to make one other yes. point too, if you permit me, sir. Yes, of course. You know, this should go to all our public public servants too, because at this event we also saw another another um, attempt to remove items from the program by the REO. Let me tell you what happened. Yeah. The persons from the Armenian hostel were scheduled to perform. We always want to give us you know our history of, of having this event as well. The forest people of Bayana, we always give them an opportunity. And they live a stone throw away from this. The hostel is located right around the square. They were scheduled to do three items, an Amarindian dance, dramatic poetry, and some other things that we were going to do. The REO then instructed them that they do not participate in Corriveton celebration, but rather sent a David G. school bus, the bus is intended for school, transportation school children, to take these children from Corriveton to participate in New Amsterdam. And they live right on the square. They always and they always participated in Corvita and um, thing. So I mean, this should go to all public servants. Are we, Kim Stevens? Are we not dealing with people who are insane? Why would you want to create this kind of division among your people? The Amerindians they live in Corvita. They are slated to perform. I am sure that they would have been rehearsed. Yes. They would have had costumes prepared for them to do their dance and their presentation at Corriveton. And the REO now, who is an agent of the government, the regional executive officer, now intervenes and takes these children away all the way to New Amsterdam to perform. What the REO has to do, why is the REO, rather than working within, with the organization, with the elected body, with the town council, he is working as well to break up the people's program. What sense does it make? What good can come out of an approach like this? And the, you have crime rampant in Barbies. People call me on the phone because they look at this program, they call me at my home, they call me on my cell phone, they call me at my office, and they complain about crime. Crime is eating up this country, in this county in particular. More so since you have thousands of people now who are unemployed because they were dismissed and made redundant by the sugar estates. A man called me only a few nights ago to tell me that his duck pen was broken into and over 160 ducks were stolen from him. And when they call the police, they can't get a singular police officer to come. But you have over 30 police officers in three vehicles at the event there to break it up because Amna Ali sent them. That is what the police has been reduced to in this country. The police is never around when people call them, when they are in need, when they are under attack from bandits. But 30 odd police officers turn up simply to break up the town council flag raising ceremony. So this program is being streamed 
on Facebook. People are looking at it in North America, in the United Kingdom, in Australia, and they are seeing what is going on in Guyana, where the police are being instructed by ministers of an executive government to break up activities organized by an elected body of officials. That is authoritarianism and dictatorship at its highest. It's nothing short of that. So we will now open the telephone lines while we continue our discussion. We will invite the participation of you, the viewers, so that you can have a say as well. The numbers are on the screen. Please be courteous, be loud and clear, and be very precise with your contribution. Caller, you're on the air. Good evening. So this gentleman is saying that there are persons who are impersonating police in Georgetown and are robbing people when they do their business. Caller, you are on the air. Good night. Good night. You know, my man is from my years as far as I go down. I don't see anything really fast between my man here. Oh? When they actually present it. Okay, this caller, this caller is of the view that only um, afro guyanese celebrate Mashramani. Therefore, the implication is, what's the big deal? Why Indian people want to celebrate Mashramani now? You see the thinking that is going on in this country, and the government is fueling it. They are fueling it by the activities that they must control everything. What is David Granger's school bus, David G. school bus, doing fetching people for uh, Mashamani activities? Isn't that a school bus designed and purchased for school children? But it is fetching, they're doing political work uh, and for Mashamani events. Caller, you're on the air. Good day. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. They are sucking the blood of the Guyanese people. They are eating and partying and traveling and enjoying lavishness and they are not producing a cent. They are not earning for this, this country. All they are doing is eating and sporting and traveling. None of the productive sectors under their government is producing none. But all they are doing, every time you see the president goes into the interior, five aeroplanes going. They open the Latem Magistrates Court, which they did not even build. The PPP government built that court. They, they opened the court the other day, and 200 persons, I am told, 
were flowed in from Georgetown. And they stayed overnight and they had big lunch and drinks. They, they must have spent a fraction of what the court, the court cost the bill in, in, in celebrating the opening the court. But that is their mentality. Call her on the air. Good night. Thank you. Once one of your parent yes. is a Guyanese, yes. you are entitled to a Guyanese birth certificate and a Guyanese passport because you're a citizen of Guyana. Where should I go to apply for? At the wherever the GRO office, the General Registers Office, is located. I mean, I know where it is in Georgetown, but there must be an office located in New Amsterdam. I, I don't think there's any office in New Amsterdam, but um, if you're calling anywhere from around the like, Perifton area, you can check with Mr. Anamaya. Oh, I think. Okay. Kilkai. Mm -hmm. Well, could you check at um, Anamaya office at Hampshire? Yeah. Okay, so I'll All right. Yeah. But that's not a big problem. But make sure you get it done for the court. Make sure you just them because this is an audience show. You know, we're going around checking lists and so forth right now. And a lot of persons um, have to be registered. I want to appeal it as well. Makes it easy for us as local government officials as well to know where you are. Please take transport in, uh, and register to the area that you're living right now. Time Thank is you. limited. Carla, you're on the air. When you call, make sure that your television volume is low because it affects the feedback that we are getting in the studio. Caller, you're on the air. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Where are you calling me from? Tell us about the, the threat we have from Venture, both our, our attempt in the Angeles. Yes. I want to ask this question. Yes. When our Indian brothers who live in, in that region, that section of the country, would they join the Angeles? Uh, of caller, this caller wants to know if Indian Guyanese, and I, he is the same person who called accusing Indo Guyanese of a lack of patriotism. I don't know how you think, sir, that you have the uh, you have the audacity to call on this program to ask me whether I, because I am an Indo Guyanese. Whether I am a patriot and whether I want to defend my country? Caller, you're on the air. Hello, good night, sir. Good night. I call from Catholic, right? Yes. That caller is not ready. I just want to point out to Paul out there, too, that I know caller didn't mention about um, the kinds of things. On our program here in Perpton, we've always had a very mixed program because on a divorce program, we are country, we are poor country, poor society. Very much, yeah. But if one goes through the program. Yeah, you have Chautal singing a song on this program here. Very dynamic. You have the National Pledge, you have an Amerindian dance, you have a poem, you have another dance, you have a song by Cortis, you have a program that is mixed, reflective yeah. of a Guyanese culture. You have Chautal singing. You have Chautal singing. Indian have, dances and so on. So, yeah, 143 students were slated to perform at the program. So a lot of preparation were put in. And these children must have done a lot of hard work and their dream to perform before the community was shattered by Amna Ali, who sent a pack of policemen to break up a lawful ceremony. Call her, you're on the air. Calling on the air. Good night. Good night. You have to lower your volume. Could you lower your television volume? Please lower your television volume before you call. 
And I, I want, I will deal next week with the belief expressed by this caller who is bent on creating discord in this country by articulating that Indo-Guyanese are not nationalistic and patriotic. That is something that they are spreading on the ground. That is that guy who called is simply disclosing what is being fed to them on the ground. And let me say here, they are spreading on the ground in West Coast Barbies that former President Bharat Jagdeo sold out to Venezuela Guyana's territorial integrity by getting Venezuela to sign the Petro, the Petro Caribbean arrangement. Because they are unable to find a replacement for that contract that was so lucrative for our rice farmers, up to now, two years hence, they can't find a replacement. They bungled up our relations with Venezuela, so they can't answer to the ordinary Guyanese. How it is when the PUP was in government, these, we had so good relations with Venezuela that Maduro came here and visited us, and we, Venezuela was our best partner. And within six months after we left government and hand over the thing to them, they broke up the Petro Caribbean arrangement. They had an airline that used to come from Venezuela. They chased the, the, they chased the people, they seized the, seized the aircraft, and they now put us close to war with Venezuela. Where the president now got to go and stack the borders with army officers. That is how they have transformed our relationship with Venezuela. And because they can't provide any intelligent reason to the intelligent people of this country, they're concocting this rumor that Jack Dame sell out some part of Guyana to Venezuela, and that is why Venezuela used to buy our rights. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Call her on the air. What then? You are what? I'm enjoying the program. Oh, you're enjoying the program. Thank you. Yes. That's correct. to be committed to somebody. If, if not so, our next event coming on May, we shall do it in our town council compound. I'm uh, suggesting that. My thank you, for, let, me both, let me thank both of you gentlemen for being part of this program. You, I'm sure that the viewers out there uh, welcome your intervention because they would have read from secondhand events in the newspapers and they would have heard me speak about it and write about it, but they have heard from the two of you and you have given great details. So I want to thank you very much. Um, in closing, I want to say that 
we have to stand strong. This is not going to get better. The history has shown that dictators behave worse as they get older in government. So my, but you have to continue to resist. You have to continue to resist. And I encourage you to put the matter before the courts, put it before the New Amsterdam High Court. You don't have to come all the way to Georgetown. Put it before the New Amsterdam High Court and let a judge rule on these matters. If you do that, you internationalize it, you put it in the judicial system, you put it in the legal record of this country. Right now, it's us gaffing. Six months from now, it will be removed. We will not have any permanent record of it. But if you go to court, then we'll have a pronouncement from the court that will guide us in the future. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, viewers, this is where I have to say goodbye, please. Happy Holi. Enjoy Pagua. Um, unfortunately, I can't be in Barbies. I would have loved to be here to celebrate with you. Unfortunately, that is not possible. So until I see you again Tuesday, stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you very much.